My name is Renee Passman. I have the privilege of working for uh, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, also known as Advanced Development Programs. Uh, Skunk Works' mission for the last 76 years has been to deliver on our customers' most urgent national needs, um, starting all the way back in, uh, in the beginning with uh, the XP-80, America's first operational jet fighter going through um, iconic platforms like the SR-71, still the, the coolest airplane ever invented, um, the U-2 and continuing on to today. Um, Songworks has really been the leading edge of Lockheed Martin's aerospace and defense portfolio. My job uh, in the Skunk Works is Director Integrated Systems, which doesn't really tell you what I do, which is a feature and not a bug of my job title. But what I am um, pleased to be able to share with you a little bit today is, um, as you might imagine, the Skunk Works spends a lot of its focus on what's next, uh, the cap next generation capabilities that we can use to deliver on our customer's mission. and. Um, what I'd like to share with you today is, is some of our progress um, on inst instantiating digital thread, latest technologies, platforms like Dassault Systems 3D Experience to allow us to continue to deliver um, on the quality and the schedule that the customers expect from uh, the Skunk Works. What we are really looking at from a Skunk Works perspective is um, our projects cover the entire uh, product life cycle that you uh, might imagine from an aerospace and defense type of program, um, all the way from conceptual design through modeling and in, uh, simulation, manufacturing, um, all the way to sustainment um, and end of life. And one key part of the Skunk Works culture in the last 75 years has been very close collaboration across all of those areas. Um, that is that is the way we work. Um, what we've learned as we uh, have started this digital threat initiative is that by giving our workforce these latest tools, we've been able to make that collaboration easier, to be able to make it go faster, uh, to be able to bring data in sooner, make better decisions, see what the impacts are of those decisions and use that to guide where we are going. Um, and really making that collaboration uh, stronger. And so if we kind of think through the, the uh, standard product life cycle, it really starts uh, with design. And obviously for years, um, many of us have used um, computer-aided design, CAD, to really do uh, a lot of that design work. Um, where we have started to focus from a design perspective is combining that with our uh, full model-based system engineering infrastructure. And so being able to tie that system engineering model together with the um, 3D you know, physical model, if you will, to really understand how requirements impact the design and vice versa, what happens if things change, this is also where we are looking at, you know, demonstrated capability like the ability to respond to a model-based request for proposal. That's a journey that we're on together with our customer to see, um, you know, what it is that they can can deliver and what it is that we can respond with, um, and uh, and doing that, you know, in a model-based world. A big part of that is using the latest generation of product lifecycle management tools like 3D Experience Platform. Um, that really allows us to collaborate, not just between ourselves, uh, but also with suppliers and being able to do that in a way that is actually collaborative um, early on, which sounds you know, simple, uh, but you know, can be challenging. And, and by doing it well, we're opening up a, uh, a much better way of, of integrating different perspectives and, and making sure that those, uh, those elements are incorporated into design. One of the things that we kind of expected would be very useful and, and have found uh, to be very useful is, you know, in that scalable collaboration environment, having that authoritative source of truth. Uh, many engineers, many people, um, regardless of expertise, will tell you, you know, we spend a lot of time uh, trying to find information or arguing, well, is it that version of the document or this version of the document that is uh, that is the right one? And um, we expected to see and have now actually started to see significant um, efficiency benefits from having that single authoritative source of truth and not having to spend the time looking for those things. Um, and so that's been that's been great to be able to drive, uh, you know, again, that efficiency up, which really ends up focusing on 
affordability. I will also say that one thing that we learned that was perhaps a bit unexpected um, as we started to, to use more of the 3D experience platform in the design phase um, was actually the social interaction, the collaboration, the, the swim capability, where um, this was an area where you know we hadn't necessarily focused in on, but the team uh, teams were able to take that environment and uh, really use it to effectively collaborate, not just in a single team, but with also with geographically dispersed teams, and we found it to be very useful to have all of that information uh, again in that single source of truth. So whether it's questions and answers, um, the latest status on some things, things like that, but um, having that that uh, real-time collaboration there um, has, uh, has, again, just significantly um, increased the ability to, to collaborate and to get um, the efficiency up. And that has been uh, very beneficial from, from uh, all the projects we have applied it to. If we step to the next chart, um, in terms of design, uh, you know, Skunk Works does a lot of design work. We also manufacture um, a lot of things. And we've always had things like design for manufacturing as a part of our process. Um, but with the latest generation of, of uh, digital thread initiatives, we've also been able to start applying things like designing for robotics, um, being able to you know, better leverage that level of automation into our planning. Um, or into our design, uh, being able to um, you know integrate not just our PLM systems, but also our enterprise resource planning and manufacturing execution systems together um, to really connect all of those major areas. And again, just make it easier for people to do their jobs, uh, make it easier for, for the information to flow so that people can really concentrate on doing the difficult parts in the case of the Skunk Works, you know, building airplanes and other systems that have never been built before, you know, really putting their focus there. Um, also, from a manufacturing for planning and process simulation, this is an area where, I mean, we've, we've had manufacturing simulation um, capabilities for a very long time, but where we're seeing here is by making this easier to pull in, by having it be on platform, um, we can pull this, you know, very far forward into the life cycle uh, of the product and it'll actually allow us to use things like virtual builds and others to really, um, you know, know what it is we're going to do before we start doing it um, to a level that perhaps in the past we, uh, we did not. Um, also, it allows us to actually make changes and to really get a very close tie between design and uh, manufacturing to be able to, um, you know, influence the design as we're going along, uh, again, to a level of detail and with a level of certainty that, um, you know, is a, is a step forward from where we were in the past. And that, again, allows us to just increase the efficiency, increase the effectiveness, and, and in the end, um, you know, create a, a more affordable solution. Of course, manufacturing isn't the last step. The Skunk Works has the uh, opportunity to also take a number of our products into sustainment. Um, and, you know, again, whether it is that design for sustainment, which is something that we've, um, you know, done often in our in our uh, in our history but in the past that was often focused on on subject matter expertise right uh, people who have many many years of experience and you know oh, when I did this the last time and now let's go do it again that type of conversation um, what we're finding with the latest generation of tools is we can still leverage that expertise but we can leverage in a more scalable way um, you know one subject I matter expert is never going to be able to support all the programs um, and so by by allowing uh, for better collaboration by allowing with better tools um, and allowing that to happen earlier in the, the product life cycle. Um, our digital threat initiatives are allowing us to, to bring that expertise in a more scalable manner um, to all of our programs. Um, another really interesting area that we've um, you know started to uh, put a lot of focus on is um, how do we get that that, uh, that collaboration between manufacturing and sustainment, really looking at things like digital work instructions and how do you make sure that, um, you know, that doesn't just include things uh, for manufacturing, but also for sustainment. And certainly, you know, that life cycle, that idea of a life cycle digital twin, this is something that 
you know, Lockheed Martin has uh, done a lot of work in over the years, um, even including on our, you know, fifth generation um, aircraft. Um, but having it in a way that uh, allows us to, again, tie it all the way back, not just to manufacturing, but actually back into design and making sure that the data flows in the digital twin uh, seamlessly and without uh, people having to do that. Um, I think, uh, you know, again, if you talk to maintainers or, or uh, sustainment end users, there's a lot of time spent putting data data into different systems. And by making it easier to do that, again, it allows those people to focus in on the on the hard parts of their job um, and not on the data entry parts of their job. And so that is um, another area where we're looking at um, a couple of different initiatives of really driving this forward from a sustainment perspective as well. I wouldn't want you to think that um, by you know talking about these uh, design, manufacturing, uh, sustainment in their silos, that that is really how we're implementing things. Because what we found as we've gone through these digital threat initiatives and, and explored um, you know the latest generation of tools and capabilities and processes, is that it it the biggest thing that it allows is that that ease of collaboration throughout these parts of the life cycle. And so you get to the point where your, your requirements from the beginning um, can be used to drive you know, seamlessly into manufacturing and sustainment early on so that um, when things you know, change or when um, a good idea gets brought forward or um, an ex a subject matter expert you know, brings up a concern, we can actually look at those changes in an extremely agile and responsive manner to really pull all of that together um, and deliver the kind of products that our customers are looking for from the Skunk Works. Um, and so it's really you know, both the, the, the better collaboration in each area, but even more importantly, that collaboration between those areas and getting that data flowing efficiently and effectively. And that is really where we see a lot of the benefit from a, um, from a, a collaboration perspective, certainly uh, from a product quality perspective, but also from an affordability perspective, um, because in the end, you know, Lockheed Skunk Works has been for the last um, 76 years delivering capabilities um, with the quick, quiet, quality mindset that our customer expects from us. Um, where we are really focused on now is how do we take the next step in that journey um, and, and continue to also improve uh, not only the schedule, not only the quality, but also the affordability of our products um, to fit into the market space um, that we are uh, working in today. And that's really where a lot of the, the work um, that from our digital threat initiatives has been focused in on. Um, that is, I think, where we've been, um, we've been relatively successful in not just talking about things, not just um, thinking about things, but actually doing and finding specific projects to implement capabilities on um, and partner uh, with other parts of our company, with uh, other um, suppliers in our industry with companies like Dassault to actually implement these initiatives and um, see, try, learn by doing, if you will, um, see how things get pulled together, see what works, see what doesn't, um, and then improve on the next time. And I think that's uh, been one of the key things that we've taken away from uh, or continue to take away from this ongoing initiative, um, the need to, to, uh, to try uh, the having that tolerance for discovery, um, learning, and um, implementing a better solution uh, very rapidly. Um, I think we've also um, significantly uh, learned, as I'm sure many of um, of you have, uh, how important uh, training is for our workforce. Um, you know. We can, we can give everybody all the latest tools, but if we don't give them an environment, uh, don't give them the training to go along with that, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's difficult to instantiate um, significant change. And so whether that's training in the tools, uh, training in an 
process, training in the in a new way of thinking, um, that has been one of our, our key takeaways from all of these initiatives that we are continuing to drive forward. And I think a third element um, that we've really, um, you know, appreciated and, and learned as we've gone through this journey and continue to go through this journey is that partnership, um, whether it is partnership with um, with our, our customer who is on our journey uh, along with us or on this journey along with us, uh, whether it's a partnership, the partnership with uh, Dassault, um, where we have been able to, um, you know, get capabilities deployed very quickly um, and be able to, um, you know, get the training and get the other things that we need in order to actually take these initiatives in order to actually start doing rather than just, um, you know, creating PowerPoint charts and, and talking about what we might do. And so I think those are some of the things that have allowed us to make a um, significant amount of progress um, very quickly, in some ways, frankly, uh, quicker than maybe we even ourselves um, expected. And so with that, um, I'm excited that uh, we were able to share some of what we're working on. Um, I look forward to, uh, to seeing um, what everyone else are, uh, is doing as well so that we can continue to drive the capabilities forward. Um, from a Skunk Works perspective, um, we look forward to continuing to make additional progress um, in our, uh, you know, in our, in our tools and our efficiency and our ability to deliver um, for our customer and uh, look forward to, you know, the next 76 years of progress from a Skunk Works um, and, and continuing to fulfill our mission. Thank you.